Investing in local urban agriculture, trying to build urban farms to create a you know more local source of food. I really believe that you know we can supply our entire community locally with food. We don't have to um, ship anything in. You know, there's no reason to anymore with the technology that's available today. And I'm not talking about GMOs. 
Uh, I'll get into exactly what I'm talking about later. Um, my favorite food is anything that you can grow yourself. <laughs> and my favorite mode of transportation is bike. Cool. <clears throat> my name is Adam Rochford. Uh, I'm also involved with the co-op. Um, I guess I'm here because I <laughs> offered to let the co-op uh, you know, host the event. But um, now I'm very interested in um, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm really interested in market-driven solutions for a sustainable future. Um, and so, because I, I don't really believe in top-down approaches, I don't think that um, they really work unless you get buy-in from the people that have to make the decisions every single day. Um, and if we can harness people's purchasing behaviors to drive a more circular economy, a more sustainable economy, um, then I think that that's the, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the kind of initiatives I want to work on. Um, I, my favorite mode of transportation is my bicycle, um, but I drive my car way too much um, since you know, there's a lot of places I want, I want to go and pick up big heavy things and you know, a truck is a lot more useful than a bicycle sometimes. But, um, and at the risk of sounding bland, my favorite food is white rice, so. <laughs> which is not local. Um, but, Sylvia La Poilouaz. Sylvia, to make it easier. Uh, I'm an engineer by trade. I worked uh, all my life in manufacturing. I love the, the field, but I know that it's causing a lot of problems, so I'm working to transform it for this uh, new economy that we all, all want to see. Uh, so right now I dedicated my, my, the end of my career to uh, make, making this change happen, see the circular economy, uh, be implemented and I very much like the grassroots approach mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think this will uh, happen from top down or through policy but through our for through us getting connecting and making it work um, my favorite food is bread uh, transportation <laughs> trains so part of what we want to do today is to Enable all of you to better stories. Oh, we, I'm sorry. We still have a couple of minutes off. Uh, I'm, I'm Dan Sockrider of Broad Ripple Incorporated. I'm a web designer. Um, favorite food, pretty much any veggies. Uh, long time vegan or vegetarian vegan. And uh, I use my car uh, all the time. And I really, uh, that's an aspect of my life that I, I would say I have some self loathing because I do understand just how automobile centered. We are, and, and just how much uh, you know that's a detriment to our <laughs> our well-being. Every time I walk, um, and I walk in, in an urban area, I just smell this carbon monoxide, and I just think to myself, we could do better. Why are we still in love with the carbon uh, or the internal combustion engine? Why aren't we, you know, moving beyond this? So uh, I would like to see myself doing a little bit more biking than using the car going forward. My name is Dana Lane, and I am. Uh associated with the co-op here. I volunteer in several places and I, my favorite food is the same as Dana here. Any kind of vegetable and any kind of fruit except a banana. I, um, my favorite mode of transportation are my two feet legs. I walk everywhere. I do not own a car. I haven't driven in over 15 years. I, just, and I take the bus if I need to go somewhere farther than my legs will take me. And um, I believe in sustainability, uh, growing what you eat. And I, I don't shop in a grocery store other than right here. I haven't in a long time. This is my, this is my store. What we're going to try to do today is make this interactive as we can. Uh, we want to explain what the circular economy is. It's not new stuff. That's the cool part. It's not really that new. Every time, probably every 30 years, something happens, we get a new name, uh, and people get excited about it. You know, I like, like to say there's not a whole lot new in the world. Uh, it's just we put new names on But what we want to do is to give people that are like-minded, like want to get them enthusiastic about connecting, doing things and doing the circular economy so that there's a whole lot less waste. We can change that economic model that we've been working with for the last 100 years or so. Um, but 
we will do a little explanation. We don't want to do tons of PowerPoint slides that just put you to sleep. Um, but we want to explain things, start asking questions, and um, but we'll get started with some slides. But Sylvia, did you want to any housekeeping? Where's the bathroom? Yeah. Right there on the left. Okay. So anytime you have to get up and you want to take a break, don't hesitate to do so. Uh, if you think we all need a group break, let us know. Um, we're happy to do that. And if you say, I think we're spending too much time on a particular thing, we're ready to move on. We're open to that too. Okay. Um, so give us feedback and um, we want to be interactive with all this. So go ahead and get started. You can introduce our partners. So, um, fortunately, uh, all of them are here. We want to thank them very much. So, um, Sustainable Indiana and People Institute are helping us through the uh, whole series of events that we want to take throughout Indiana. Dan is our media partner and he's doing a great job mm -hmm. in recording uh, our sessions so we can, we can promote them and share them with uh, many more uh, people. Um, our local partner is uh, Austin, will also uh, do a presentation about uh, agriculture. Uh, and we're very grateful to you at City Foods for hosting us. Uh, it is exactly the kind of place where we want to have uh, these meetings that are very much organic to what we are uh, uh, talking about. Um, we have an agenda, but we don't necessarily have to stick to it. Uh, you will all get this presentation so you can get the information uh, uh, on your time. Um, and if you, if you think we're staying too much on a section, we can uh, shorten it and uh, go to the exercise. The exercise consists in us planning a new economy in Lafayette that will concentrate. So if, if it's up to us, how we would like the energy infrastructure, the transportation infrastructure, and agriculture to look like in Lafayette. Uh, and if you all agree, we can send a summary of our work to the mayor's office, who uh, I know is doing a lot of work in trying to make Lafayette uh, a walkable place, an attractive place. It already is, but you know how much effort you need in, because you're competing with many other places. So I think he wants to make it a sustainable place, and I think it's fair for us to share our, our ideas and also to support the, the people in elected office. There are not so many that are talking about sustainability, that are interested in climate change, and I think they need our uh, support and our ideas. Uh, so we will we'll go through what is circular economy, um, some success stories, so we're all encouraged by the fact that a lot of people are working on this, whether they call it circular economy or not. Um, and then we'll take a break, we'll look a little bit at uh, you know, what value uh, does it bring, so it's not only a dream, but it's a way of doing business, an alternative way of doing business and still be very successful, both at uh, big corporation level at small business level and at uh, individual level. And then we want to, to focus on three aspects that are uh, vital for any sustainable transportation. Um, Each of us will contribute our ideas on how we want this transformation to uh, take place. Uh, again, uh, stop us, uh, stop me when I'm uh, uh, dwelling too much uh, on a section because uh, we want to make sure that we get to the uh, exercise. Um, 
I just wanted to start with what I assume is the ultimate goal for all of us here to create a sustainable world. And I think from each of you introducing yourself, I think we agree that that's what it is. Uh, that we're after. Uh, I think the only debates are when to get there, how fast to get there, and by what means. Um, and it's, for me, it's always good to start with a very, very broad reminder of our small place and also enormous place on this planet and try to keep our things in perspective. We always talk mostly about the economy. And we forget that economy is just a subset of society, of all of us humans living together. And we are a subset of the planet Earth, and even more so of the universe. So whenever some people present sustainability as if these three things are equivalent, for me, uh, they are not. We must keep, uh, uh, again, our, our priorities straight in the end. Nature is, doesn't care if we exist or not, and we cannot exist uh, without it. So we better do everything that we keep, whatever we do, in balance uh, with other people, other living things, and with the planet. And no matter how difficult, in everything we do, we should try to think at all these uh, scale and levels all the time. Uh, when I'm driving, what does that Im what that impact is uh, on a planetary level? It's not easy. It's exhausting. But uh, we, this is what we need to think because everything we do impacts uh, the whole system. Um, and there is a definition for what sustainable development is. I'm not going to read it, read it to you again. We'll read it. But, but we don't need to talk a lot about uh, conceptual work and you know, waste decades in, in doing theoretical work. Uh, there are already definitions. If we don't like them, we can adjust them. But they are there, so let's all go in the, in the same uh, direction. Um, what is the circular economy then? Uh, I think it's very, uh, it's very easy to define. It's, it's a circle, not a line, which is why I think it, it makes it more attractive than other models that have been, or other names that have been uh, used. It's very easy to visualize, and I think very easy to visualize it in the context of how nature works, because nature works in a circular fashion. Only we invented this uh, uh, artificial way of taking, making, dumping that we're operating uh, in. Um, so it is one that is restorative by design. You know, again, we're thinking from the very beginning at the consequences of everything we do. If I'm going to make a tractor, I should spend a lot of time at the design stage in understanding what will be the impact of that tractor, where will the tractor end up at the end of uh, its usage, um, and make sure that, are you, that we're using uh, materials uh, and keep them at their highest value. So uh, every object we put work in it, we put materials, we put energy, and then we throw it away. Uh, we should reconsider uh, that uh, attitude. Because in nature there is no waste. Waste is food. Uh, in nature, uh, waste is a human concept and especially uh, something that we have accelerated in the uh, industrial uh, uh, era. So to, to make sure that we're not... Um, uh, the world has to learn new ways of working together in order to solve the challenges we face in the 21st century. Challenges like water consumption, waste management and the use of materials. If we can come up with new, intelligent ways of cooperating, new opportunities can be created that further economic growth, reduce our consumption of natural resources, and help to save the environment. The enterprises and authorities of Kalimbor, a city right in the heart of Denmark, are at the forefront of conceiving clever, cooperative solutions for these problems. Centers of some of Denmark's largest industries are situated in Kalimbor. Among others, the world's largest producer of insulin, the world's biggest enzyme producer, the largest water treatment plant in Northern Europe, and the world's first second generation bioethanol demonstration facility, a project affiliated with the Dong Energy Power Plant in Kalimborg. 
The enterprises of Kalimborg have come together in a collaboration aimed at organizing in order to utilize each other's waste products in a rotating local cycle. By creating a closed cycle of waste products between enterprises and authorities, a unique system has been created. Here, residue and byproducts flow in a minutely orchestrated system of production, where the byproduct of one company is the raw material of another company. Through this cooperation, the enterprises achieve an economic advantage, since all agreements in the symbiosis are based on sound business as well as environmental principles. Through millions of years of evolution, nature has created similar systems. In nature, there is no such thing as garbage. All output becomes input in a different part of the natural ecosystem. In this way, a falling leaf becomes part of the soil. The same principle is applied in the Kalimborg symbiosis. If other local communities are willing to learn from the experiences of the Kalimborg symbiosis and start their own industrial symbiosis along similar lines, we have the opportunity to create a healthier and better world, both environmentally and economically. The people at Kalimborg would be delighted to share their knowledge and invite anyone interested to contact them. The Kalimborg symbiosis is a good example of a new type of cooperation that can help build a richer, more sustainable and more harmonious world. Again, and they call it industrial symbiosis, and they don't talk about waste, but this is, and it's continuously expanding. This thing never died, never got discontinued. It's a perfect example of a live system that works. Uh, and you know, you can, we should all contact them and learn from them. As, as you heard, they're very open to share their experiences with others. But again, this gives us, and at least gives me a lot of confidence that these models can work if you have the right environment and the right combination between local governments, businesses, and citizens. It's also a small place, so you don't have to be in a big city for, for to make this uh, to work. Uh, so uh, this is a perfect example on how it works and how much it works like nature. I, I will show you the details uh, a little uh, later to see that there are farms involved, that there are small uh, businesses, that there, there is the local municipality, wastewater plant, a real diverse uh, system exactly like uh, like in nature. And they continue to add every year. Now, did they have so many businesses in Kalumpur in 1961? No. But what they're doing is they're attracting. So let's say I have a byproduct that I do not find a partner for. I'm going to bring in or develop that kind of business, which is what we should all start thinking uh, about. Um, so uh, again, what is the, uh, the, the circular economy? It is still an industrial model. We are still going to make things, right? We're not going to go back in some eco-village. There is nothing wrong with that. But I think once we tasted an advanced economy, it's difficult, right? Once we know cars, we're not going to, going to give up on that. But we're going to make clean cars. Uh, are we going to give up on flying? Probably not, but maybe we'll fly in blips again. Uh, there are people working on that. Um, so we should just, again, close this line, open line that is causing us a lot of problems. By the way, we're not on, going to talk a lot about problems. I think we all agree what they are. We're going to talk about uh, solutions. If, if you want, we can have a separate section, session about problems, but uh, I think our attitude is uh, that time is done, talking and debating what the problems are. It's time for, for solutions. Um, so we want to have resources and products and processes that are renewable, long-lasting and high value, low carbon, low entropy, low waste, 
non-toxic, that's also essential, clean, nourishing, and uh, healthy. Again, the concept is not new. Uh, it, it has been developed in, in many other fields. Unfortunately, it hasn't uh, become mainstream. And this is what we, our work uh, consists of in talking about all, it all the time at this local level so that we can replace the current system that obviously is not, uh, not working. Um, there are also priorities in, in this uh, system. I think we all know that there is a lot of emphasis on recycling and I'll show you some examples where recycling is not such a good idea. Uh, not to mention recycling is at the end of a cycle. So in a circular economy, we should prioritize maintenance, keep things in use for as long as possible, which is something that we used to do when we, could, we couldn't uh, get so much credit so we can buy things that, uh, uh, we can buy things too fast after we bought the previous ones. Um, uh, we, we can repair things instead of replace them, but of course they have to be designed differently. They have to be designed for repair. Another thing is to bring repair to um, respectable uh, trade, right? We all know that when people say second hand, it sounds pejorative. Well, okay, you couldn't buy a new one so because you don't have enough money, so you have to buy it. We need to replace, you know, to work at this value level. and. Uh, not call it second hand, maybe call it second use, or uh, all the better that I can use it longer than, than discarding immediately. The one that I had to discard was a bad thing because it wasn't uh, well made. But you, you will see how in your daily life it's, it's difficult to make this change because we all have these uh, entrenched attitudes that you know, I'm not going to buy a used club, right, only in desperation. And that's wrong, and we'll show you some examples. So uh, then reuse, repurpose. Uh, once you you got bored of your refrigerator, find a neighbor who can take it and 